Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Henley Business Show. My name is Lara, and tonight we are going to discuss the issues surrounding organizations, ethical behavior, and profit. Who of you remembers Enron? Enron was one of the largest energy companies in the US. But due to their illegal activities and unethical behavior, including accounting fraud and lying to their share stakeholders about their profit, Enron met their end and remained the most drastic example of what can happen when these actions are deemed greatly unacceptable. Oil and gas companies are regularly criticized for being unethical, but recent reports have come to light regarding companies in, oil, in all sectors around the world conducting the same behavior. Take the fashion industry, for example. Just last year, a clothing factory in Bangladesh collapsed, killing over a thousand people due to the poor labor conditions and a disregard of regulations. Low wages, environmental pollution, and child labor are amongst other present issues that take place within this industry. Or take the food industry, <laughs> <coughs> where the most recent scandal has been the horse meat scandal. Research conducted has shown that over 30% of food and beverages in our supermarkets are mislabeled. However, it could be argued that in a growing interconnected world, stakeholders are becoming more aware of unethical practices and conveying that this is not the way to do business. This begs the question, is honest profit a corporate daydream or is it imperative? Tonight, I'm joined by Celine, Bianca, Fabian and Ogo, four business analysts with global experience to debate on this topic. Welcome all and thanks for joining me. Thank, Thank you. you. So, how would you define honest profit? Um, actually, um, I'd like to answer that. Um, honest profit, I believe, um, entails a company's transparency, its um, ethical practices and corporate social responsibility, the way it manages um, its stakeholders' expectations and um, relationships to um, create shared value. Now, this includes um, its ability to pay um, its employees um, promptly, um, filing on payment of their taxes and other bills, and of course the corporate social responsibility to their stakeholders. Now these stakeholders also include their investors, their customers, their employees, the government, and even the, 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 the communities in which they have um, operations. Thank you very much, Ogo. But how come that so many companies still benefit from dirty profits then? Well, Laura, listening to everything that's just been said, um, I think there needs to be a line drawn between a company's responsibility towards uh, some of its stakeholders. Um, my personal belief that the purpose of a company is to make profit. Uh, so, <laughs> the purpose of a company is to make profit. Therefore, the company has more of an obligation to its shareholders. And as an investor, is that not what investors obviously invest for? Is, is to see a return on their investment and watch the company grow. Exactly. Wouldn't you like to see your company make more money? Yeah, that's why I invest in it. But let's go back to the first point he made, the line. Where do you see exactly that line? Take, for example, Apple and Foxconn. Foxconn is the main manufacturer of almost all Apple products. And what's happening at Foxconn, it's been shown that uh, people are actually committing suicide due to poor working and living conditions on those premises. Where yes, do you see you, the line? You cannot expect a company like Apple to know the day-to-day -day business activities of, of their partners, well, suppliers and manufacturers. I mean, the, the time and effort that, we've, that would be spent going looking into the supply chain 
of their partners, it would it be count, it would be counterproductive. Of course, you can if you want to. Sense. You only have to want to. You can take, for example, now uh, John Lewis. Only in 2012, 2013, they increased with more than 20 percent the UK supplier rate. Okay, with that, they have more influence and control over the products they are later on going to sell, <laughs> and then their employees are partners, and that benefits both the stability of the company and the employees <laughs> themselves. Seriously, are we going to use John Lewis as an example of a global company? I'd really love to see how they will perform if they have to deal with other countries' um, rules and regulations and other cultures. I mean, John, Lew John Lewis only has a presence in the UK. I'll give you an example of Halliburton. Halliburton is an American multinational, very well known, that had operations in Nigeria. Now, they wanted to make more money for their stakeholders. They wanted to keep ahead, ahead of um, competition. But the system was corrupt. And they only, they, they, at that time, they, they felt that they had to, 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 to um, bribe um, the government officials just to get a contract. What so do you say about that? So you're saying they were not making enough profit and they wanted to give more value to their shareholders by bribing a government? But as what long type as, of a value as, long as the it's government... It's not normal. Oh, should not the government slow down, rule. slow down. I think we have to move on from here. Surely there are companies who make honest profit, right? Yes, of course. There are such companies exist. Take American Pill, for example. A multinational company to admire. Uh, they committed to manufacture and di distribute their product from U.S. through providing um, inter through providing jobs for local local people and the communities, and uh, inter uh, using adopting a vertical integration <laughs> structure. Unlike uh, many other companies you just discussed, uh, like uh, Fosca, American Pair use uh, choose to, to go sweatshop free and. Um, they rather than they choose rather rather than choosing cheap label or using child label. If you're gonna like for enemy, I will get, give you another example. You know, <laughs> the Body Shop, which is very famous in the UK. You know, they actually uh, demonstrated the her ethical behavior uh, through fighting against animal test, and they supported the child feed communities uh, with the fund generated from fair trade. They also give the money to innovative global project for social and environmental change. Okay then. So you mentioned the body shop being ethical. Mm -hmm. Right. I agree with the fact that they don't condone any animal testing whatsoever. See. So why is an ethical company would company would they choose or allow themselves to be acquired by a company like L'Oreal, who are known for animal testing? Let me remind you a little bit about the history of the body shop. It's actually a company was, which was built by a housewife and her husband just to maintain their family. And their business idea was so innovative that it went global and so big. And they had no business background. So at the moment they sold it, they felt that they couldn't do any more for it. So their decision was to just give it to a company with larger horizons and would take care of it. That's yeah, why they did it. Yeah, but you kind of proved my point. The company started <laughs> as an ethical company and then it, their, their aim or objective shifted to profitability. Exactly. I mean, my point is, is that it's, it's very hard for companies to make honest profit. It's a daydream. Uh, you gave me two companies that, that are ethical, uh, American Apparel and The Body Shop. You take them two companies that operate in Western uh, markets and you, and you uh, set them up somewhere else in the world. I can give you like, so many more examples. Like, That's like not Ogo the problem. Sorry. There are many. Sorry, but unfortunately, we've run out of time. <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing your opinion with us tonight. I'm inclined to think that honest profit is a bit of a daydream as the majority of multinational companies are involved, whether directly or indirectly through suppliers and manufacturers in immoral business. However, companies should strive to be more honest. Choosing the unethical route might work for short and medium term, profit but will not work in the long term as the case of Enron showed. Society and public opinions have in the past and will in the future influence companies like L'Oreal to reconsider their actions. In today's world, stakeholders are more sensitive towards unethical business practices and are more likely to react. 
In order to succeed, companies therefore cannot longer ignore their stakeholders but have to act in their own best interest. So, what do you think? Is honest profit a corporate daydream or is it imperative? And is there anything more than we as stakeholders can do to prevent companies from behaving unethically? Thank you very much and good night.